I've been doing a lot of astrophotography recently and I'm always looking for a better and easier and more um, and, and more reliable way to focus in the darkness. It's always the, one of the biggest challenges is trying to ensure you've got really sharp pinpoint stars when you're out shooting the Milky Way. So my friend Darren, who I shoot a lot with, found this product called, it's called Focus on Stars. And it is a focusing filter that you put on the front of your lens that is supposed to uh, aid you in coming up with an incredibly sharp, as sharp as you can possibly get uh, photograph when you're doing Astro. So he ordered it, he bought it, and we're gonna take it out tonight and give it a shot and see how well it works compared to the other ways that we're used to focusing in the dark. Before we head out into the darkness to see if this thing works, let's talk about briefly what you get when you buy the filter system. So you're going to get the filter itself that comes in this little pouch. It's two sizes. This is a 110 mil 100 millimeters, and then there's one that is a little bit larger. This is the smaller one. It's $125 for this filter, which I think is a little bit steep, but I get that it's a very niche product and the, uh, it's, it's done by a single person. Um, somewhere, it's, he's in Europe. I believe, it's, I believe it's hungry. But anyway, I understand that he has to recoup his cost of developing and creating and getting this thing manufactured. But it is, it's $125. You get the filter, you get a little pouch to put it in, and then you get a single page of instructions. This is what, what comes uh, in the package. In addition to that, if you don't already have it, you're gonna to have to outlay a little bit more cash because you're going to need a filter holder similar to, to this. So this is a square uh, or rectangular filter holder that, that clicks on or attaches to the front of your lens to allow you to slide that filter down into it. If you don't have one of these, this is gonna be an additional outlay for you in order to use the, uh, the Focus on Stars filter. Let's talk about what this thing, how it's supposed to work. So once you put the, the filter on, um, well, before you put the filter on, let me start over. You set your camera to the angle that the, the focal length that you're going to be shooting. So like 16 millimeters, 20 millimeters, whatever your focal length is going to be. Then you're going to find the brightest star in the sky that you can possibly find. Once you find that, you're going to set that in the very center of your, of your frame. You're going to use live view on the back of the camera, and then you're going to set your lens to manual focus. After you get into manual focus, you're going to zoom in on the back screen as much as it will allow. That's usually like 12x, something like that. Once you've got that, that's when you're going to put your filter inside the filter holder. What's supposed to happen is when you put that in, is that bright star is going to give you three spikes or rays out of the top and three out of the bottom of the star. Or, you know, it might be slightly oriented differently, but you're gonna get three. As you turn that focus ring, those three spikes will kind of move. And the objective to get the perfectly sharp photograph is to have the three of the rays coming out of the top and the bottom to be equidistance apart. So like this would be bad, this would be bad, but having them equidistance apart on both top and bottom would be as sharp as you can get it. If you're thinking that could be kind of hard, I'm thinking the same thing too, because that star pinpoint at 16 millimeters is gonna be really, really tiny. And I don't know how well, even at 11 or 12 magnification on the live view on the back of the camera, how, how well that is going to translate to be able to see those little peaks. So we're gonna get out in the darkness and we're gonna give it a shot and let's see how it works. We're out in Ridgefield, a little town north of Vancouver. And we're not trying to like, again, we're not trying to uh, create a composition. We're just testing how well this filter 
this focusing filter is going to allow us to focus in the dark on the stars. So we're going to try it on a couple different lenses and a couple different cameras and we'll find out if this thing, if it works, if how easy it is to use, if it's going to make Milky Way photography easier or if we're better off doing things like we have in the past. So Darren's getting his, uh, his set up. Uh, he's going to do it first on his, uh, on his Nikon mirrorless camera. And then I'm going to try it on my, on my Sony a7R4 with a 16 to 35 on there. All right, so let's get it set up and we'll go from there. So without the uh, filter on, you can actually see the star on the back of the camera. It's, it's actually pretty bright. That one little pinpoint of light that you're seeing on the back there, you can see it. And as we move the focus ring, it's getting, you know, it get, becomes like a, a blurry orb. And then as it gets shrinks and becomes a pinpoint, that should be as sharp as it gets. And that's probably around right there, what we're seeing. But watch what happens when we put the filter on in front of the, in front of the lens. It gets so, it gets a lot dimmer. Obviously it's a filter, but the whole point of that is, of the filter is to be able to, uh, you know, adjust that focus ring and what, there we go, there we go, something's happening. You see it? I can see it popping around the star. A little, there we go, a little tiny bit. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know if you can see that on the back of the, if this video is picking it up at all, it's probably just a blurry mess because it's so dark. But there's just the, the smallest amount of that pattern that we're supposed to be seeing, like, you know, right, right in there on it. Um, so maybe we'll just uh, futz with it and take a shot and see what it looks like. So hopefully you can see this, and again, I apologize if you can't. So I put the filter on my Sony, and I changed it to black and white just to get rid of any kind of color noise that I might be seeing. Hopefully you can see that the filter's on there. Now watch when I change the focus ring. You notice how it just goes all blurry, and then as I get it back in focus, you'll see those, those little you know, star rays come out just like it shows in the instructions as it slowly comes into focus. And when you get them just right, then it starts to get blurry again when you go out. And so as you're pulling it back, pulling it back, that looks to be about as good as it gets about right there. And it's, it's really easy to see. Uh, I'm zoomed in on the, you know, on the back. If you look up here in the top left, uh, the, the manual focus is on and I'm zoomed in to like 11.9. That's as far as it's of a zoom that I can get on my Sony. But again i got focus peaking on and you can see that those little uh sun rays you should be able to see a little bit of an aura red cast to it because that's the color that shows focus peaking when it's at the sharpest point point. and as i go either direction from that where it's really red you can see that the um, it goes away but when i got it right there it looks pretty good so i'm going to take a shot and just see if it's uh if it's in focus so on Darren's Nikon, the, the noise on the back is just so prevalent that you can't tell it from the stars. It looks like static on a, on a television screen. So it's, it's absolutely impossible to, to get the same result that I was getting on my Sony, but I don't understand. Uh, it should work pretty much the same way. And you can, you know, hopefully you can see on the back, there's this one star and you can see where it's starting to give that that little, those little rays, you know, coming off of it like it's supposed to, but it's, I would say it's, it's just not as, it's not as clear as it was over on my, on my Sony, and it's definitely no easier than trying to do it manually. That's a little better, maybe. The first time I did it, I was at um, I was at 24 millimeters or 35, and now I've zoomed all the way out to 16. And the star that I'm focusing on is obviously a lot smaller, even though I'm zoomed in all the way. 
and you can barely see it. Hopefully you can see it on the video uh, again. It's, it's so hard to tell, but I'm actually barely getting, I'm getting the three little spikes at the top and the three little spikes at the bottom. I had to rotate the filter to make that happen. Uh, how useful is that over just making the star as small as it can be? I'll take a shot like this. I'm gonna take the filter off, take a shot where it, this says it's sharp, and then I'm gonna unfocus it and then focus it by using my method of making the star dot as small as I can and then compare those two shots. The only way I was able to get it to work on the Sony was I changed the creative profile under like the picture settings from standard to black and white. So watch what happens when I go into the menu system and I make that change from black and white back to color. Watch what happens, I'll go into the menu system and I'm gonna say under the creative style for black and white, I'm gonna to go to, uh, let's just go back to um, standard, which is where I usually keep it as standard. All right, if I go back to standard and you look at the back of the screen, there's just a lot of, of color noise that starts dancing around and when you're trying to focus, let me zoom in here to focus, there we go. Now you can really see that color noise just dancing all over the screen, right? It's just evident all in there. Now I'll go back to the black and white. That's standard. All right, we're going to do the same thing. I'm going to punch in to, to 11.9. So that's the same exact view I was just looking at with color. And now I'm in black and white. And notice there's just no color noise. And that is the only way that I was able to get the, the filter to work. And it's also, also the only way I was able to get it to focus just using, you know, the focus peaking and my eye on, the, on that rear view screen was to get rid of that color noise, put it in black and white mode so that the stars were more pronounced. It was just pretty much black and white, obviously, and not, that color noise kind of went away. So Darren's using an Icon Z7 uh, two, and even when he's in black and white mode that noise on the back of his screen is so pronounced that he can't he can't get the filter to work at all uh, it sort of kind of does but it doesn't work any better i don't think than it does by just using your uh, you know the, the same trick of trying to find a bright star and adjusting that focus ring to make that star as small as possible so we're going to wrap it up here i'm going to get back uh, on the computer download the photos and I'll share you share with you the the shots taken using the the filter and the ones that I just used using my eye and making that star as small as possible in that rear view screen and we'll see which one if there's any difference at all I'm back in the office I have the photos all downloaded so let's get into Lightroom and compare those two shots one with the filter and one without so here we are in Lightroom. The one on the left is the one with the focus on stars filter. The one on the right was focused just using the method of zooming in, you know, punching into the maximum magnification on the back screen, and then turning the focus ring to make the point of the star as small as possible. Uh, these were shot at a very high ISO, 3200 f2.8, and I was only using a four second um, shutter. So these are going to be extremely noisy. So we're going to kind of ignore that as best we can. Let's zoom in and see what we see. Give it just a minute to kind of catch up. All right. Let me get, let me find like the middle because there's a little, there's always going to be a little trailing on the edges. Um, let's see here. Here we go. So this is the one on the left. Let's take a look at this star right here. And this one looks a little bit more round than the one on the right. This one here looks a little blobby. Um, again, let's take a look uh, elsewhere in the frame. I'm looking at the grass down here and it is, it's extremely noisy because of the high ISO. But as far as sharpness goes, this looks, to my eye, it looks very, very much the same. Um, I, I can't tell much of a difference at all. Let's go back to the stars and check this one here. Now in this instance, I'm looking at this star on each side. This one is a smaller pinpoint than the one on the right. So I'm gonna have to say that, yeah, the focus on stars made them just a little bit um, sharper. 
than just using my naked eye to do it. Yeah, comparing these, again, the brighter stars, the ones uh, on the right seem to have a little bit more of, of blur to them than the ones used with focus on the stars filter. So what's the verdict? It's a little bit sharper using the focus on stars filter. I absolutely agree. I can see the difference at 100% comparing the two photos side by side. Now, it worked pretty well uh, on my Sony, but on Darren's uh, Nikon Z7 II, it was, we're gonna try it again, but I, I, it was just very problematic, whereas on the Sony, it was much easier to see those, those little, you know, those peaks, those rays off of the stars to be able to, to get them in the right position. On Darren's camera, it was pretty much impossible. We couldn't get it to do what it, it perform as well as it did on the Sony. Uh, and that's not, you know, dissing the, the Nikon at all, just that I was able to get it to work on my Sony and on the, the Nikon, we just couldn't get the same results as far as the being able to, you know, focus in on it. So that said, I cannot 100% uh, endorse the product because I don't know how well it works with other cameras. I can only say that it worked with my Sony pretty well. Would I use it in the future? Possibly. I still think the best way for me is to try to focus before it gets dark, get my composition set, focus, because I need to get those really nice, clean foreground uh, shots with low noise before it ever gets really, really dark. And in order to do that, I'm taking those photographs, you know, ahead of time, right at the blue hour, so that it's easier and I've got a clean image to merge and layer and blend with, with the Milky Way that comes up later. So I say all of that to say it works as advertised, but it's not nearly as easy to use and there's no guarantee that it'll work on your camera. So if you have any questions, leave me uh, a comment below and I'll do my best to answer it. Also, I'll also leave a link in the description to the, uh, to the website if you're interested in reading more about it. And there's a couple of, um, uh, there's also some links to YouTube videos on the product from the manufacturer as well. So with that said, thanks for watching. Appreciate it. Give me a thumbs up. Don't forget to like and subscribe and we'll see you next time.